as always, the card players are well in evidence. So are the fam... and the people who ignore signs. 57,000 are queuing outside Lancaster Park in Christchurch to see France meet New Zealand in the third and final test match of the tour. On this fine day, both teams will be able to give their best and the game should provide a memorable finish to the Frenchman's visit. The crowds pour into the ground, bringing with them the debris of their long wait outside. In no time at all, the banks and for a bird's eye view before the kickoff, the players certainly look isolated. The ground is firm, there's no wind, and it should be a sparkling game today. Comberabero kicks off for France, a long one that goes right over the dead ball line, and there'll be a dropout from the 25. In the first two minutes, the scrums go down. This one's a tight head to New Zealand. The ball goes out to Little, and he kicks into touch. Peak throws in, the ball is knocked away and they're all after it. Graham is chasing it, can't pick it up and the forwards go down in a ruck. The ball comes out and play moves across the field. The New Zealand forwards are charging along. The ball goes out to Tremaine and he passes to Graham. And Graham scores. This is what the crowd came to see, fast open football. New Zealand's number one moves in for the kick. Four minutes gone, New Zealand are in the lead by five points to nil. Only a minute later and Lacroix gets the ball to Comberabero, to Guy Boniface, he beats Yates. He'll go through, no, he's caught, but crossed is over to score for France. The try is not converted and with just six minutes gone, the score is New Zealand five, France three. Lacroix puts in. The ball goes to Peak. Watt wraps his arms around him there. Peak gets the ball to Lacaz and it's in touch. The forwards go down on the ball, playing a hard game on this hard ground. The referee sees something in there and puts down a set scrum. It's tense and fast this game as the crowd sees Connor give the ball to Little and he scores near the corner. This is great rugby. The All Blacks are turning it on hot and strong. They're in the lead and Don Clark's kick will make it 10 points to three. A scrum is down and the ball comes out to France. Comberabero is after it. It's kicked away. Mackay scoops it up, tries to give it out. Tremaine can't take it and Lacroix passes to Lacaz who saves. Connor gets the ball and kicks a high one along the line. It's in touch again. Another scrum is done and Lacroix gives the ball to Comberabero who kicks upfield. Connor is waiting for it, takes it, passes to Don Clark and his kick will find touch. After the line out of scrum, the ball is out to Comberabero, to Andre Boniface. He's on his way, but the All Blacks are after him as he throws a lovely one-handed to Brother Guy, who goes over the line. But it was a forward pass, says the referee, and there'll be a scrum. This could be dangerous for New Zealand, but Connor sends the ball straight back to Don Clark, who runs in a circle and saves again. Peak throws in. The All Blacks could get the ball here. No, the French backs have it. E. Boniface is trying to make the break, but he's chopped down over the touchline, just short of the corner flag. They're in a great position to score, these Frenchmen. In comes the ball, it's quickly smothered. And the referee calls for another scrum. A few yards from New Zealand's goal line, and wouldn't the Frenchman love to cross it? Ball is hooked by New Zealand. Connor to Don Clark, who kicks for the touchline. But doesn't find it. Lacaz takes the ball there to Guy Boniface, who tries some sidestepping and puts the ball out of play. Watt throws in near halfway. Lacroix gets the ball and he's off. But it's a penalty to New Zealand, and with only five minutes left in the first half, Don Clark will attempt to put the ball over the crossbar. It's almost a 50-yard kick. And New Zealand has 13 
points to the Frenchman's three. Out comes the ball to Connor, to Wolf, to Russell Watt as extra man. Bonfa tackles him high, takes the ball and sends it to So, who left puts one upfield. Kai is after the bouncing ball, he gets possession, but Calvo gives him a friendly hug and the happy couple waltz into touch. Almost half time and the All Blacks aren't taking their lead lightly. They'd like to see a lot more points on the board and so would the Frenchmen in a different way. This first half has been wonderful to watch, both teams fit as fiddles and throwing the ball around in fine style. There's no doubt that the All Blacks are having the better of the game so far. The scoreboard proves that, but at least twice the French have been unlucky not to score. When the whistle blows for half-time, the score is New Zealand 13, France 3. Two converted tries and a penalty to one unconverted try. The second spell, of course, could produce a change, but the way New Zealand is playing makes that seem pretty doubtful. Don Clark kicks off in the second half. The ball goes right down to Lacaz, who takes it and puts a long one back downfield and into touch. A few minutes later, they're scrumming and the ball is out to New Zealand. They don't hold it long and it's on the ground. Andre Boniface has it. He's tackled, Little has the ball. He's taken round the throat and it'll be a penalty to New Zealand. Now watch the ball, it's almost short. It hits the crossbar and bounces over. Six minutes gone in the second half and New Zealand has 16 points. They don't let up for a moment. There could be a score here, but Little's in touch, a yard short of the French goal line. Anything could happen from the line out in this position and when the ball comes in, both backs are down on it. The referee calls for a scrum. Who's got the ball in there? No one knows and New Zealand is awarded a penalty. Winneray takes it, a little tap kick. And it's a try to New Zealand. Tremaine it was who went down on the ball and the French team just can't understand what happened. Moncler tells his men, don't argue with the referee. Don Clark will take the kick. It's an easy one, and with 30 minutes to go, the score is 21 points to three in New Zealand's favour. The Frenchmen will have their work cut out to beat that. Winneray kicks upfield and sends Lacaz chasing after the ball. He runs behind the post to force down, and moments later, a penalty against France gives Don Clark the opportunity of putting up another three points for the All Blacks. They are not content with only 24 points, and from a line-out ruck, the New Zealand forwards throw the ball out to their backs. They make another bid for the French line, but the referee halts the play, scrum down. Back on the halfway now, and Lacroix puts the ball into this one. It's hooked out to Connor, who makes a solo break. He gives a little kick. The Frenchman take it there and put the ball into touch. In spite of their terrific lead, the All Blacks can't break the Frenchman's spirit, and gamely the visitors try to gain ground. Don Clark makes it hard for them as he kicks up towards the French 25. Moncler runs back for it. He has the ball, he's tackled, and he passes to Lacaz. To Lacroix. To Lacaz again. Winneray grabs it, goes down. Ian Clark is there, he's tackled, and Calvo slams the ball over the touchline. Seven minutes to go, the pace is just as fast as when the game began. Meads has the ball, he's a human bulldozer, and he scores in the corner. Mark misses the kick and New Zealand have 27 points to France's three. The Frenchman can't win now, but as any first-class footballer should be, they're still after points. The home team is just too good for them. McEwen is charging along, he's brought down. Raleigh intercepts nicely and the ball goes to Lacroix. He's doing some very neat footwork and he will kick into touch. 
is nearly over and what a game it's been. On this sunny winter's day, on this hard dry ground, we've seen the All Blacks come into their own. The Frenchmen are fast and they're clever, but not fast nor clever enough. The game's best play has been turned on by the New Zealand forwards. Never once do they miss a chance to worry the visitors. And with two minutes left to play, Yates clinches their reputation. The kick is easy and Don Clark converts to make the final score New Zealand 32, France 3. An overwhelming win for the All Blacks and their biggest international victory since 1924. The once proud French 15 has been well and truly routed here at Lancaster Park. Our cameramen are happy, the tour has been great fun and they both back New Zealand. At Wellington Airport the day after the third test, the French team prepares to leave New Zealand. It's been a short but exciting tour and the visitors have played some fine rugby. They'll have two games in Australia before going back to France and we hope they show the Aussies a thing or two. A French farewell for rugby veteran Tom Pierce, and not to be outdone by the management, the two captains say goodbye in the same way. Au revoir, tricklers. We wish you a good trip home. Rugby union chairman Cuth Hogg and Wilson Winneray add their blessings in true Gaelic fashion. It's August the 20th, 1961, and the French rugby football team's tour of New Zealand is over.